Kira, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm absolutely fantastic. I'm so honoured to have you on my uh, <laughs> live show. It's fantastic. It's fortnightly. You're my second guest. So um, I'm just going to crack right on. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about who you are in Roller Derby? So um, my name is Kira Hesse and I play for Eastbourne Junior Roller Derby um, as well as Team GB Juniors. And I've been part of Derby for about six years now. Six years. Okay. Would you mind awfully sharing your age with us? <laughs> I'm 16. So okay. I started skating when I was 10. Right. Okay. So tell me about that. How does a 10-year-old get into roller derby? Uh, well, I got some skates for my 10th birthday. So I went to some roller discos with my mum. And the guy there said that my mum should join roller derby. <laughs> So we went and watched the game. Um, and yeah, that was it, really. We were kind of hooked from there. Do you remember which game it was? It was Brighton Rockers versus LRGC team. OK, so quite an inspiring bunch of people there to be watching yeah. as your first game. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And what do you do in Roller Derby? So what's your position in the pack? Uh, usually I'm a pivot slash blocker. Um, yeah, that's my favourite position, really. Right, OK. And so you play for New Boards, mm -hmm. Roller Derby, that's right. Are they affiliated to any other leagues or is that a standalone league? Um, yeah, we're affiliated to Eastbourne Roller Derby, which has a men's team, a women's team and a co-ed team. OK. And how many league members do you have in New Boards? Um, well, quite a few of them are starting to age up now, but... Right. Maybe around 16 or 17, including okay. all of the newbies. About, when we talk about ageing up, we mean that they're turning 18, so they're yeah. able to go on into the to the 18 and overs league. So yeah. they're leaving you guys and they're, they're going yeah. and to start that part of their journey. So I guess if I was new to roller derby or if I was thinking about a junior team, how would I, what's different between junior roller derby and um, over 18 roller derby? What, what's the main differences? Well, it depends really, but in JRDA rules, it's the same rules as adult WFTDA rules, but they have two divisions. They have open to all and then female only. So okay. we got to watch JRDA champs when we went to the World Cup last year. And they have basically two separate events that is open to all in a whole separate championship compared to female only. Okay. Um, which is a bit different because in adult derby, you know, you have MRDA, which is, I guess, kind of men's, a bit open to all. Yeah. And it's completely separate to the WFTDA, which is women or female only. In terms of the contact that you make with your bodies on track uh, for junior roller derby skaters to uh, over 18 skaters, is there a difference? Um, well, there's three levels. Level one is non-contact. Level two is like light contact, but you're not allowed to step into the hit. You can just kind of lean on someone. And level three is basically all of the rules of WFTDA except a bit more on like no swearing, no bullying, kind of more emphasised on sportsmanship. Okay, I can understand that. I can understand that. So you've been skating for six years. You've been playing roller derby for six years. Uh, well, I got my skates for my 10th birthday and I started yeah. my first like official derby training session um, on a week before my 11th birthday. Uh, which so was pretty with... much 10 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Six years, sorry. Yeah. But okay, I cool. was involved in cool. Derby like before that. I just didn't, right. wasn't allowed to train until then because there wasn't the sort of adequate insurance and stuff. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you had to wait until the league kind of caught up with your aspirations to be a, a roller derby skater. Well, actually, when we started, we uh, travelled to Windsor every other week because they had a junior team <laughs> okay but um then we kind of decided that traveling two hours away was 
kind of a bit much, so we should start a team in Eastbourne. Yeah, it seemed a bit extreme to travel for two hours, but how, yeah. how often do you train in a week now? Um, I train um, three to four times. Um, right, but, okay. But recently <laughs> I damaged my ACL, so I've been kind of holding off a bit, not really allowed to do any contact until that's better. But like... So you've got to rehab that. Yeah. But normally, normally it's three to four times a week, which is way more than quite a lot of um, aged up skaters would be skating. That, that's that's quite a lot of training time, isn't it? Yeah, I'm so I'm lucky really that amazing. I've got the opportunity to train so much. <coughs> and why do you have that ability? Is it because you have lots of training sessions, or you have your own building, or? Well, on a Monday night, uh, Brighton Rockers have started allowing us to scrimmage with them. Um, okay. So anyone 16 and above. Then on a Tuesday, we have advanced juniors. A Wednesday is Eastbourne adults advanced skating. And then a Sunday is the beginner juniors and beginner adults at Eastbourne. So, yeah, basically go cool. out as much Excuse as possible. <laughs> I'm just going to have a huge cough. I'm so sorry. <coughs> <coughs> it's a total announcer's curse. The, the moment you don't want to cough, you go into cough. So just bear with me one second. <coughs> okay, so training done. You're doing way better than most of the adults out there. So fantastic for you, even with your resting ACL. Tell me a little bit about games and tournaments. How much opportunity is there for games for junior, junior teams? <coughs> uh, well, unfortunately, there aren't very many junior teams as opposed to adult teams. So... We actually haven't had a game really playing as a team for a really long time. There's like a fair amount of mixed games. So the sort of game where anyone could sign up and just play um, with a mixed team. Yeah. But in terms of playing as the newborns, the last time we did that was quite a few months ago. We travelled to Calais and played against Calais juniors. Okay. That's pretty cool. So, Calais, so there are junior teams in Europe? Yeah. Excellent. Do you know... <coughs> Excuse me, once again. Do you know how many teams there are in Europe of juniors? Um, oh, that'd be tough. I mean, there's been, like, recently quite a lot of new teams formed. I know that in Scandinavia they have quite a few competitive teams with, like, a huge amount of juniors. Um... And then there's a few in France and Belgium, and then obviously a few in the UK. Okay, cool. And in terms of tournaments, what kind of tournaments do juniors get to compete in? Because I know like, there's lots of tournaments coming up for, for 18s and overs, but is there many tournaments for juniors? Um, well, we've had CAT, which was the first European proper tournament, which happened in 2017. And that was like really really amazing um and then at Eastbourne we have a, a junior tournament alongside the adults tournament at Eastbourne Extreme in the summer um but yeah. other than that there isn't really much out there like in the US they have a huge amount of tournaments for juniors like you see posts about one every weekend but there isn't much much of that sort of thing going on in in Europe is there plans to have more junior tournaments in Europe or is it a case of needing more junior teams to have those tournaments? Uh, I'm not sure, really. I think we do. There probably would be enough junior teams for a tournament, but the organising is just really difficult um, mm -hmm. considering, like, you know, you don't just have a junior, but you have a junior and, like, one or two parents, you know, as well as coaches and you have to have more coaches because we're all under 18 some of us are quite young need a bit more chaperoning so the logistics are quite difficult yeah i can imagine um <coughs> when you're a junior skater and you're looking to age up into a, a an adult's team is it an well i'm going to ask this but i think it, it it feels kind of obvious but i'm going to ask it anyway is there 
an advantage to having been a junior skater in terms of getting a place on that over 18 team? Um, well, I think really it all just comes down to like your ability on the track and your experience and not particularly whether you've been a junior before. I just think it's more about how you perform on the track. But having okay, I'm with you. all that so, extra experience that a lot of adults wouldn't have, like, you know, when you're younger, your brain's a bit more plastic, you kind of get that derby brain, which some people struggle with. And I think that's quite a good advantage. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Don't I know that? <laughs> I always feel like I wish I found for the derby many years before I did <laughs> without giving away um, <clears throat> my age. So there isn't that many tournaments. However, there was the Junior Roller Derby World Cup. Yeah. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Were you there? Yeah, I was um, with Team GB and there were five other teams. There was Team Europe, which was compromised of uh, teams from France, Belgium, Denmark and Sweden mm -hmm. and there was two USA teams because obviously Junior Derby in the US is just like miles ahead of everywhere else really so they had a yeah. US West and a US East and yeah. there was Australia and Canada. Excellent and how did Team GB do at the Junior Roller Derby World Cup? So we came sixth out of six. Okay. <laughs> so last. But I think what really counts is that we all learnt so much. We kind of went somewhere. We weren't really sure what to expect other than that we knew that we we're probably going to get beaten. But that wasn't really the point. You know, we've taken back so much experience to our leagues at home and like just learnt so much, had such a great time, met people from all over the world. It was such a great experience for all of us. I'm sure, where, where was it held? Um, Philadelphia. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that place, yeah. So in America. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you had to travel out there, you had to fundraise to get out there, I'm guessing? Yeah, we did lots okay. of fundraising. What kind of things did you do to fundraise as a, as a team? Uh, we had fundraising game, um, Every time we had a training session, we opened that up to other skaters who could contribute as well. Um, just a lot of social media, like the social media team that was uh, Bev did such a good job at just like really pushing for donations, like, and lots of great people had, you know, put lots of effort in. There was like a pounds for penalties so people would pay a pound every time they got a penalty in their game just yeah. some really clever fundraising ideas they are clever definitely <laughs> and, and so thinking about the fundraising that you had to do and the traveling that you had to do and i guess team gb meant that there were skaters from all over the country did, did it go as far as scotland wales uh it, it was only english people it just so happened but the applications were open to anyone from okay. anywhere in, in Britain. How um, did you manage the training for that? Because getting you all together must have been quite a challenge, logistically. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of travel. So Eastbourne yeah. had, I think it was eight juniors on the squad of 23. Um, right. And we all had to travel really, really far. So we had about five training sessions all together. Mm -hmm. um, most of them were in the Midlands or up north. Up north. As yeah. far as Manchester for some of them. Mm. So, yeah, that was quite a trek, but it was really worth it in the end. Yeah, but quite an experience for you, I can imagine. So you're doing all that travelling, you're pushing the fundraising as well, you're training back home with your own league because that, I guess, didn't stop or taper no. off. So that must have been quite a... Um, immersive experience and I imagine quite exhausting coming out the other end of it How yeah but cope? sorry <laughs> no go on you tell me it's all about you it's not about me <laughs> um I just think I wasn't really tired afterwards I was just completely energized you know that experience has really just made me want to be a better skater you know come back to the next world cup stronger because I will be old enough to be 
like I'll be young enough to be in the next Junior World Cup. Um, I'm you just know, ready you know to. Taking place? Uh, we're not sure, but twenty twenty or twenty twenty one, I think. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so something to aim for in the future, definitely, and I guess a real reason for you to try and to get some of those tournaments happening in Europe again and uh, you know you mentioned Kat and I was there I remember um, I was commentating at that tournament and we had junior commentators we had junior officials as well which was absolutely fantastic to see because uh, for me I feel like the progression of the sport and the longevity of the sport really kind of rests on making sure that our next generation have exposure to all of these roles and can you know get that experience that they can also excel in it so it was a really exciting tournament for me to be at but I imagine actually being able to take part in it was even more exciting so we talked a little bit about that what's the um what's been your highlight game so far I think my favorite game I've ever played was at the world cup against team Australia right um I just really enjoyed it because like, you know, took a couple of star passes. I just think it was our first game together as Team GB. We all, all our training just kind of paid off, really. And it was just so nice to sort of see everyone finally working yeah. together, you know. Everyone just and having really a great like, time on the track. Yeah, it came together as a team, finally, under that kind of pressure of game day. Yeah, That's plus fantastic. the Australians were just such great people to play against. Right. Yeah. Brilliant. And do you feel like you've made some lifelong friends there having gone? Oh, through definitely. That? Yeah? Yeah. Fantastic. What, what an amazing thing. I can't imagine being kind of, I don't know, 15 and going out and going, <laughs> going to America and traveling away and playing games like that and, and just the experience that must have been. So it's fantastic here to share. Um, what do you think the challenges are in junior roller derby? So uh, you've touched a little bit about the fact that there's not a lot of gameplay that can happen within Europe because of the, the sparseness of the teams. Do you feel like that's going to be a real problem? Is that our next challenge to kind of increase the number of junior roller derby leagues we have and junior teams? Well, I just think um, in the UK, definitely, there's not really much investment in roller derby, obviously, because, I don't know, it's just not as well known at the sport. It's really hard to like because everything's volunteers, you know. Yeah. I think for a lot of people, if you have kids, you you want to start a junior league. But if you don't have kids, it's kind of harder to get that motivation to start a junior league. Like I know Eastbourne, both the coaches are mums of of skaters and like or an aunt of a skater in Hereford. You know, it's a mum who's a who's a coach yeah. and I just think unless you have a kid it's quite hard to have that motivation to start a junior league because it it takes a long time to see the benefits of a junior league it takes a couple of years before you really you know for years it was me and three other people at practice probably for Stay two years <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but now obviously our league Eastbourne Roller Derby, the numbers are getting a bit small, but that doesn't matter because there's a load of junior skaters who have, you know, six years of experience under their belt, ready to go, yeah. ready to play. And it's that sort of benefit which would make Junior Roller Derby really appealing to other teams. But because we're yeah. only just starting to see that benefit now, that's why I think it's going to take a while for it to take off. I see. So it's kind of like, it's a bit like planting a seed, isn't it? You've got to yeah. kind of just be patient with it and keep on going with it. And then at some point in the future, you're going to see this amazing benefit to it. Um, if a league was thinking about starting up a junior roller derby team, they were like, OK, we've got the mums or we've got the motivation or we've got both. Uh, what would you say are the, the things that they need to think about? Uh, when they're setting up that league to make sure it's a, a great experience for juniors that makes them want to come back and also, you know, that's going to benefit the league and, and the junior team? Um, well, firstly, I think, you know, obviously treating the juniors kind of on a similar or equal level. You know, how you would treat 
an adult fresh meat, for example. Like, if you want us to come back, you obviously be patient with us and, like, just do the exact same thing as you would do with adults that you would want to join your league. Because when you watch junior derby, like the top level of junior derby that was happening at Champs, you know, it's, it's such high-level derby. Really, we're no different to the adults as, as long yeah. as we get the right training and effort and investment. So you feel like it's really important for leagues to invest in their junior team as much as they do, <coughs> excuse me, as much as they do their other teams? Yeah. <coughs> excuse me, I am so <laughs> coughing tonight because obviously I am doing a Facebook Live, so of course I get a cough. Um, so it's really important for teams, for leagues to be able to invest just in the same way that they do with their regular teams. Um, apart from all the safeguarding kind of things, which are considerations that you've got to take when you're looking at juniors anyway. Do you think there's anything else specific that you think, looking back now in your journey, you think, oh, I wish we'd done that sooner, or I wish I'd been, a, or is there things that you see in more established junior leagues where you think, oh, I really wish that, that we, we'd done that to start off with? Any hot tips? Well, <laughs> the main wish we have is that we just started the team sooner, really. You know, um, I just think it's the sort of thing that you just have to do it. You know, yeah. you just don't know what it's going to be like until you do it. In some places it might flop, in other places it will thrive. You don't really know what's going to happen until you try it. And are you getting junior skaters coming into uh, newborns now that are not, they don't have parents connected to roller derby or is it still very much within that family? No, we've um, started getting a couple of, um, like, junior intakes, you know, people who are from roller discos or, like, friends of friends or, you know, people's, just people who have heard about it online. Um, yeah. And that's been really good. So most of them are a lot younger than us because um, the most of our team are, you know, about 13 or older. But it's really good to just have like a new sort of intake of people who are just learning from like a lot of the juniors are coaches. You know, there's two juniors in our team who have taken like a full coaching course and sometimes we coach the adults. That's amazing. Um, and, you know, I think learning from other people that are like not 20 years older than you is just so beneficial really that kind of peer-to-peer -peer learning is just yeah. as important and that's fabulous that you've got coaches that are also juniors and that they've been supported to go through those co coaching courses as well to be able to do that that feels like something that's really progressive and maybe I don't know I've never really thought about that idea of juniors coaching juniors but of course we, we mimic that in the great team yeah. derby with skaters coaching other skaters so why wouldn't you do that it makes a lot of sense to use those people to be able to do that so that feels really exciting to me as well yeah um, so you've got a few more years uh, in the junior roller derby world what's yeah. your aspiration after that what would be your dream if you want well, to say that out loud if you don't that'd be terrible I would love to be in London brawling one day. Right. Um, but I also recognise that going up into the adult world, it's going to be a lot harder, I think. Because mm -hmm. there are so few junior teams. It's, yeah. it's quite easy to be at the top, I think. I'm going to have to train really, really hard if I want to be, to remain on a similar level when I get into adult derby. Um, Kira, that's why I just feel so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I just um, feel so lucky that um, uh, Brighton have begun to let us scrim with them. So, yeah. you know, just um, getting some training from like a team that's ranked a bit higher, and also just from the adults within our own league. Like being able to skate with the Eastbourne adults has just been great because a lot of when you see US juniors. For example, they, there's no such thing as junior skating with adults, really. You know, it's against okay. insurance policies, which are a lot stricter there. Um, 
And I think that perhaps they find the transition between juniors and adults a lot harder. Whereas in England, like especially now that the UK RDA insurance policy has been changed, I think there'll be a bit more of a crossover between juniors and adults. And I just think we're really lucky to have that. There are a couple of people who are on Team GB who are like, you know, at the top of their adults teams now, you know, skating mm. with like Division 2 or up, which is really good. Excellent. But for you personally, your sights are definitely set on London. Role yeah. Girls are becoming um, a skater who wears pink at yeah. some point in the uh, in the future. That's fantastic. But obviously I'm um, going to do a season with Eastbourne as well. <laughs> absolutely. You have to pay your at least. back completely. <laughs> do you feel like, so it was really interesting what you said about the American juniors not really playing with the adults there. Do you feel like in the next time round for that World Cup that you might actually see a bit more of an advantage because you have those opportunities? Do you I'd like to hope so. Much? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I just think, I think the strategy in Junior Derby is unrivaled. You know, like everybody just has a Derby brain. Yeah. And like, you know, obviously there's some kids who can just jump so, so high and skate so fast. Yeah. And, but nothing beats a lot of experience. Yeah. So, and so I guess being but, able to play with those mixed level and higher level and older teammates gives that opportunity for you to flex your derby brain yeah. muscles as well as your <laughs> physical muscles. Um, but also um, pl it allows you to play out your strategy with maybe a more, I, I don't want to say that the over 18s are more physical because I'm not no. sure that that's entirely true. Um, but certainly with a kind, I guess, I, I guess, I, I don't know if I'm right. Yeah, here, I would I say more, more physical. Yeah. You know, the, the stronger players in junior derby, like, for example, when we played against USA West, that was the winning team. You know, they weren't hitting us. They were just jumping over us. <laughs> right. Oh, dear. <laughs> so it's about how do you change your strategy to deal with that as well, I guess, yeah. moving forward. But still being able to be in the running, to be a physical player when yeah. you're back home and playing against people who, who are going to hit you a bit more. Well, that's fascinating. Um, so you said that you uh, would like to play for London in the future and that's really exciting to have a team that you can set your sights on. Who do you see in Roller Derby now who's like your skating hero or, or idol? Or Is there somebody that you look at and you think, yeah, I really want to skate like that, that's what I model myself on? Or is it just the whole entire Roller Derby? Or are you just, you know, to coin a really cheesy phrase, are you just being your own hero? <laughs> well... I'd love to be able to skate, like, Below Me from Crime City. Mm -hmm. um, I just think, like, her track awareness, her one-on-one -on -one blocking, the star passes she takes are just, like, so, so great. And I also love um, Esther Arocha's style of blocking. Like, really um, just physical, hitting people off, taking them back, just active all the time, never never stopping on the track just constantly be doing something that's how i want to skate excellent well i have no doubt that you will certainly reach those heady heights of london and beyond no <laughs> doubt uh, having skated for so long do you want to let us know where we can follow the team gb journey as it goes forward on social media and, and maybe your own team as well yeah, so there's an Instagram, which is Team GB Junior Roller Derby. That's, um, and then Newborns Junior Roller Derby is at NBJRD. Um, yeah, that's it, really. On Instagram. And if, if we had young people watching today, um, how could they get into Junior Roller Derby? What would you say is the best way for them to do that? Um, I think, well, I think there's a database of uh, like the European teams, which I could yeah. share in the comments of this post. Um, so basically, just find the closest team to you and message them and 
try and give it a go. Or if you're a bit older, 15, 16 or 17, then maybe just message your local adults team and see if they would feel like taking you on. <laughs> and why wouldn't they? Well, Kira, it's been so fantastic. Thank you so much for giving me a bit of your time on Friday <laughs> night to come on the Lovely Beatrix Facebook Live. Thank you show. for having I've me. Really enjoyed learning a little, I've, I've enjoyed so much learning a little bit more about Junior Roller Derby and kind of the, the whole life that, that you lead. And uh, I've got to say, I'm inspired. Three to four training sessions <laughs> a week is immense. And alongside that, doing your tournaments, your games, you know, and just being, you know, just living your life as well. So well done to you for that. I'm in, I'm in awe. Uh, if, if you want to follow more conversations from the world of women's sports, do check out thesports.com. As I said before, you can follow my podcast. It's monthly. Go to wherever you download your podcast and search for with sports. You can follow with sports at with sports. Follow me. I'm at Beatrix on Instagram and Twitter. And also, thank you so much for supporting Women in Sport, everyone.